you can see why the Brontes were so inspired to write, living in a landscape like the Yorkshire Moors. Earlier this year, Kate Botley heard what inspired Roger and Beryl, the Christian owners of Happy Hens Farm, a place of hope for young people. So we get about 12,000 eggs a day, and we're sort of labour intensive, so it's all manual collections. The farm is also a training ground for local young people who've needed a fresh start in life. And it's this which truly motivates Roger. Everything around here is about creating jobs that can make people feel good, really, about themselves. When they first come, they can be very quiet, no confidence whatsoever. But after a few weeks, they start coming out of their shell. All their anger goes. Young people James and Chelsea have both benefited from working here. So, James, tell me, what opportunities does being here on the farm give you? Well, it gives me a chance to interact with new people, and I love all the animals, and I've loved animals all my life, really. It's just made me grow as a person, uh, made me more into a man rather than a teenager, and it's just given me loads of opportunities, really. Chelsea, how have you changed as a person since you came to work here? I remember when I first came here, I was always um, anxious and dead shy. I like seeing new animals born. I like doing all the treatments with the animals. And I just generally love caring for the animals. Roger and Beryl are just great employers and just giving everyone a second chance in life. If you've not had a good life, you've, you've always got that second chance. Roger, why do this? Because it's a lot of work, isn't it? Why on earth are you putting yourself through all this? Basically, my mum left home when I was five and I turned into a very angry, aggressive, nasty young person. Uh, and I went to boarding school, I had to go to boarding school. And um, I got a letter from my dad, headmaster, that said society needs to be protected from people like Roger. I wasn't a bad kid, I was an angry kid. I was a hurting kid. So you see something of yourself reflected in some of these young well, people? Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, later on in life, I became a Christian, and um, there was no question in my mind that I wanted to spend the rest of my life working with young people. Come on, boy. I believe that being a Christian is about loving people, and seeing a young person's life change, that really is, that's special.
It's so inspiring to meet so many young Christians here on Songs of Praise. And earlier this year, across the other side of Yorkshire, we met up with Barney and his mum Pippa. The moment you discover your son or daughter has additional needs is difficult. Even 25 years on, Pippa still vividly recalls being given such news about her third child, Barney. I remember it so clearly. He was born at home, which was planned. That was great. I was just holding him relieved, grateful it was all over. The midwife said, I'm just going to use the phone, if I may, and ring the GP. I thought, OK, fine. Um, perhaps that's what they always do when it's a home birth. And she came up about five, ten minutes later and, and simply said straight to me and to Pete, my husband, we think your son has Down syndrome. My mouth was saying, well, he's as much a gift from God as our other two children. And I really meant that. And I was just saying, okay, God help me, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go under here, I, I want to trust you for this. Um, but my emotions were in bits. I knew that we'd love this baby, but I just didn't know what the future held for him and for us. It seemed in an instant if, as if the things that I dreamt of for this child had kind of just disappeared. I didn't even know I had those dreams <laughs> until I suddenly saw that they went away. Hello, I'm Barnabas Magdalankas, this man of the bedroom. The picture of Barney now is so different from those fears and, and imaginations right at the beginning. He's great, he has lots of interests, he enjoys talking to people, he loves food a lot, he loves drumming, he loves performing arts. So we're doing a summer show, talking about Greece. There's all sorts of things that he can do that I would never uh, have imagined if you'd asked me on that July day. Going to be Greece like me. Barney has a strong Christian faith. That's something I like to do in my life, to follow him, to honour him. It's nice and clean, but I think we're going to need to iron it. Iron it yeah. What's really exciting is that uh, he's going for a job interview tomorrow. Um, hopefully he will be working, as from next week, if he gets the job, on a couple of mornings a week. I think he can do it. Are you looking forward to your interview tomorrow? Absolutely, I am. You are? That's good. But you know what? You're going to have to get up early on a Monday morning. Oh, yeah, I do. Because <laughs> I think you might find that a challenge. Because it's really a big thing, really big step for me. It is a big step for you, love. I know it is. Many of the things are similar to having any child because there are the frustrations and the pains at time, but that the joys are almost greater. When a Barney achieves something, it's just like joy magnified, really. I think Barney brings a lot of joy into the family just by being who he is, and I think that we've learned to appreciate um, one another, all of us actually, for who we are rather than from what we do or achieve. And I'm pleased to report Barney got the job. <laughs>